Hey guys, I'm just getting off work today with the Army, but I wanted to take a minute to record a video uh, because as of now there are 130 dead in Paris, 100 more in critical condition, 40 dead in Beirut, 20 dead in Baghdad, and it seems overwhelming, but this just the most recent salvo and violence which has been going on as long as we can remember. The first thing that I know we should do is offer our support. I think it's important to recognize that there is no support that is too little. We shouldn't be heckling each other just because we chose to post a status decrying this violence or change our profile picture to a flag to show our support. We should be appreciative of the fact that our friends are standing strong against this type of violence that we are saying it's not okay and calling for peace across the world. Support in any form is good, so if you want to change your status, you want to change your profile picture, send money to the Red Cross or other support organizations, or volunteer yourself, then I fully support you, and I think that that is amazing. Many are trying to shut down others who say that they want to pray for the affected areas. Pray for Paris. Pray for Beirut. Pray for Baghdad. Many say that Religion is exactly what caused this, that our prayers aren't going to do anything, and that we need to take action. Maybe this is partly true, but for those of us who are religious, I do encourage you to pray. It is true that Paris is not the only place to be affected by this violence. Every day, we recognize that violence is pandemic across the entire world, especially in the Middle East. Is it important to support everyone? Absolutely. And when it hits closer to home, when one of our allies is attacked, we understand more closely just how this violence affects people on a daily basis. In the Muslim world, violence is a day-to-day -day affair. ISIS, after all, takes its home in Syria and Iraq. The genocide which they perpetuate there upon people of different religions from them is horrifying. This is an opportunity for us to recognize that the problem is not isolated, but something that is ongoing, something that we must address. There is an opportunity here to assign blame, to blame Islam or Arabs or religion as a whole for this, for producing fanatics who care about nothing but their religion, nothing except hurting others in the name of it. So is that true? Is it genuinely a case of race or religion which causes all of this violence? Well, let's think about it. Violence is not new in the Middle East. In fact, it's been going on as long as we can remember. We can trace it back a thousand years. Something that you need to understand is that in the Middle East, politics and religion are inherently linked. Many political leaders are also religious figures, shahs, and people claiming to be prophets who lead a massive following. So when a political issue arises, it is not just political, it's also religious because it is viewed as an attack on religion. The name itself, the Islamic State, tells you that religion and politics are intertwined in a way that is very difficult to separate. So in the Middle East, when there's a power grab, it frequently takes place in the form of a religious uprising. After the Iraqi war, there was a power vacuum, and many rose to power on a platform of hate hate against Americans, hate against the Western world, and hate against even their own Muslim brothers and sisters, who differed only slightly in practice. The power that they manipulate is not truly based upon faith, it is based upon fear. Fear, yes, that is founded upon jihad. I think a very important thing to understand is that people are not basically good or basically evil, as you may have been led to believe. People are basically selfish. When you get right down to it, every action we take is a selfish one, even if it doesn't seem so. We support our friends and our families because we want someone to support us. We do good things because we want the satisfaction of believing that we are a good person. Or perhaps we join our religion and we follow its tenets voraciously. We fear hell, and so we do what we can to please God to avoid it. We need to unilaterally stop blaming religion, and certainly race, for this kind of violence. Arabs are not, in and of themselves, violent people. They want to live in a peaceful world as much as you or I. Muslims are not an inherently violent people. Violence in the Muslim world stems from a selfish desire for power. And as soon as you understand that, you can start taking steps to address it. 
The next thing you need to understand is that you are personally responsible for not using your own religion or your own race and holding it against other people. You cannot hate other people just because they are a different race from you. You cannot hate other people because they are a different religion from you. You cannot force them to change and adopt your own principles. If you are religious, by all means, I encourage you to share that with other people in a peaceful and respectful way. But when their mind is made up, when they have made the decision that they are fundamentally different from you, you must respect that. We owe that to each other as human beings. We should not be telling our friends that what they're doing is not enough. Whatever you can do to support peace, whether it be sharing an article or posting a status or donating money, that's a good thing, and it should be encouraged. I joined the army, paradoxically, because I do believe in peace. Because I believe that the US Army can be used to preserve order in the world, and to allow more people to live happy and safe lives. I wanted to be proactive, and I wanted to take part. For those of you who live in the US, you need to understand that I and all other soldiers like me are your servants. We do what your Congress says. So if you have a strong feeling about our presence abroad, whether or not you believe that our war in Iraq caused all of this, or you believe that we need direct action now against ISIS, I encourage you to talk to your representatives. Research this issue and then call for action. I want to leave you with one final thought as a religious person. My favorite verse from the Bible is Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the knowledge of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. Faith is believing in the good. Faith is believing that there's a happy ending. That is not the religion that these extremists are following. The religion that they are following is one of fear. And fear is the opposite of faith. It turns nation against nation, race against race, and neighbor against neighbor. We all should have more faith and less fear. If you believe in God, do pray for peace and believe that it can happen. And even if you don't, you have to have faith and believe that there is the opportunity for peace in this world. The first step in enacting change is believing that change can happen. I believe in every single person watching this video that you have the power to choose love over hate to choose faith over fear, and to enact real change for peace. Let's look for ways to improve and help each other, rather than finding ways to differentiate each other. I know that if we do this, peace is in our reach. Not now, not next year, but someday. Because you and me, we can be the examples. Until next time, angels.